Today's deck tech ends in a storm of teeth and fangs. I hope you stay tuned to see just what I have in store. Hello, Planeswalkers, and welcome to the Oath Breakdown. This is where I break down Oathbreaker decks and build them back up so you can understand how they're built and how you should play them if you bring them to your table. If you want to support the channel, please check out any of the fine vendors above, and let's get into it. Today's Oathbreaker is Vivian Champion of the Wild. Vivian Champion of the Wild costs two and a green and is a four loyalty planeswalker. She gives all of your creature spells flash, which is something we're going to abuse. Her plus one reads, until your next turn, one target creature gains vigilance and haste. This will help us set up our attackers and blockers. But more importantly, her minus two is card advantage. It lets us look at the top three cards of our library, exile one of them face down, and then put the rest back on the bottom of our library in any order. As long as that card remains in exile, if it's a creature card, we can cast it at any time. So this Vivian's abilities set us up to actually play kind of a combo storm deck, which gets us directly into our signature spell. Today's signature spell is going to create us a swell of squirrels to storm our opponent, and it's Chatterstorm. Chatterstorm costs one and a green, and it's going to create us a 1-1 one, one green squirrel creature token for every other spell we've cast this turn. So our game plan is to play a whole bunch of spells in every turn, almost all of them creatures, so we're going to have a full board, unlike most Storm decks, and we're going to use some various little tricky mechanics to do some damage, win us the game, and stay ahead. First off, let's talk about our ramp package. What we kind of want to be able to do is set up a method of playing a creature, um, then being able to use that creature, and then playing another creature, draw and keep going, work in our favor. So we're going to be running Land War Elves, Elvish Mystic, and Arbor Elves, all to be able to just produce a little bit extra mana. Fionorn Elves does the same for us. Tangled Florahedron slash Tangle Veil also will produce a mana for us or into play as a green land if we're pretty desperate. Finally, Tangle Root is amazing for this deck because it allows us to create a green mana anytime a creature enters the battlefield. So even if our little green 1-1s one don't have haste, simply entering the battlefield should net us one mana we can use to play the next creature. Next up, let's get into some other creatures we can play quickly in order to help us storm off in the game. So Ugin's Conjurant costs zero. Well, it costs X, but in a pinch, we can play it for zero just to get our storm count up one. Ornithoropter costs zero. And Stone Coil Serpent also costs, you know, X or zero. And they're just great spells to play to get us moving. A little bit later in the game, our Frogmite will cost us zero, but we do have to get some artifacts on board first in order to trigger its affinity. Next, let's get into some one mana artifact creatures that we do have a way to make free. So we have Mirror Scrappling, Sparring Construct, Inquisitive Puppet, Mirror Moon Vessel, Hope of Gearper, and Signal Pest. While many of these creatures have great abilities we can make use of in a utility uh, sense at some points in the game, it's more important that they're here just to be played and moved on to the next spell. Now, I did mention in an earlier tactic that as we are playing a creature, we want to draw a creature and keep going. So let's talk about our draw mechanics next. Soul of the Harvest, Beast Whisperer, and Primordial Sage are all creature cards that are going to let us draw a card whenever a creature enters the battlefield under our control. This is a great start because we play any of our low-cost creatures, it's going to help us start to storm off. Next up, we have Abundance, Season of Growth, and Yiva Nature's Herald. Abundance is going to let us choose whether or not we draw a land, or in this case, usually another creature off the top of our deck to keep us going. So anytime we would draw a card, we can leverage Abundance's power to get us exactly what we need to move forward. Season of Growth is going to let us scry a card and control the top of our deck every time we play a creature spell. And Eva Nature's Herald is going to let us try to play cards, creature cards directly off of the top of our library. Next up, and important to be mentioned in this section, we have Nylea Kenai. 
Nylea Kenai is a 5-6 creature that's indestructible, and as long as our Defotion of Green is less than 5, it isn't a creature. The most important line of text on this card is that our creature spells cost 1 less to cast. That's going to make most of our artifacts and lower creatures cheap enough that it's going to enable our insane strategy. Now, I do have some other cost reducers I'd like to talk about real quick and some other artifacts that help move our plan forward, so let's get into those. Oketra's Monument is going to make any white spells we have in the deck cost one less to cast. We're not going to make use of that at all, but it's really more in here because whenever a creature enters the battlefield under our control, we get to generate a 1-1 white soldier creature token. This extra token coming to play is not only going to help us build an army and kind of feel like we're storming off on a level 2, it's also going to re-trigger some of our draw and other effects. So it's important to keep in mind that it is an enabler. In the same vein, we're running Genesis Chamber. Anytime any player has a creature enter the battlefield under their control, they can create a 1-1 mirror. Now, this is going to benefit our opponents, but let's be honest, we're the ones with a real winning game plan here. Next up, we have Ronus's Mo Monument. It's going to make our green creature spells cost one colorless mana, less mana to cast. Still really important to our play plan, but what's probably more important, it's its ability to give any creature we control plus two, plus two, and trample whenever a creature enters the battlefield under our control. A trigger we are going to be able to hit often. Again, feeling a little bit like we're storming off. Now, that's not really storming off. Let's talk about what really storming off looks like. Along with running Shatterstorm, which is our big spell that's going to let us make an army of 1-1 creatures... We're also running Avi, a Progenitor Ooze. When it enters the battlefield, it's going to storm, and it's going to create a number of copies of itself with 1-1 one -one counters on it equal to the number of oozes in play. So when the first Avi enters play, it's going to be a 1-1, one -one, but for each additional copy that enters play, they're going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and a little bit more insane and harder for our opponents to deal with. To that end, between a large army of small 1-1s, one -ones, or a large army of oozes, we need a way to punch this damage through. To do so, we're running Rampage of Clans, and Raise Forerunners, and God Eternal Ronus. These are all big game-ending spells that are going to pump our entire team. Now that we've talked about the game plan and how all the cards kind of come together to suit it, let's talk about a little bit of removal in order to protect our plan. We're running Reclamation Sage, Beast Within, Return to Nature, and Kalani Ambush. These are all excellent spells for setting up our play plan by protecting it. Being able to remove a key piece of an opponent's strategy or something that prevents us from, say, being able to attack or makes us spend mana in order to attack with each creature we want to swing in with is problematic. Now that we've gone through every card in the deck, let's really quickly go through the mana base. We're running Termorphic Expanse, Evolving Wilds, Myriad Landscape, and Blighted Woodland. These are all lands that are going to help us fetch lands out of our deck and thin our deck, so we're more likely to hit the cards we need to hit in order to storm off. We are also running 18 Forests. Now, this is a relatively simple but more competitive deck than I usually do for the channel, and its deck cost is going to be $39.38 on TCG Player. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below, but I'd love to hear what you think about this deck and what changes you might make to upgrade it. Thank you guys for stopping by again. I just want you to remember, your Planeswalker Spark lights up my life.